Hello everyone, welcome to another Q&A session from the Reaper blog. The YouTube channel has just passed 18,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to all my patrons and everyone that has donated recently. So awesome. Thank you to everyone that has liked and shared and commented on my videos. Thank you guys so much. If you want to support what I'm doing here on YouTube and on the Reaper blog, consider being a patron at patreon.com slash the Reaper blog. I'm doing some exclusive things there. I have a lot more stuff to share. So if you want everything, check that out. In this video, I will be answering five questions that came in from the community. First question comes from Timo. How do you communicate to a client that, in your opinion, the mix is done? I mix music created by myself and friends. We sometimes get into crazy amounts of fine adjustments to the final, final mix. When you're mixing it for yourself, you still need a deadline. Uh, that's usually the, the reason, uh, or money, is the reason why the, that doesn't get out of hand in professional studios um, or even freelancing. Um, just having to pay or having a really limited time to get things right always pushes you to, um, to think about what's actually important with it. Um, most of the time with music, that's going to be the vocal. No one really cares about the snare drum, what microphone you used, and um, the you know different types of compression that you used on it, or you know, there's all these things that uh, we like to do as engineers that it's fun and interesting, but it makes no difference at all to the song. So just focus on what's important. Give yourself a deadline. Um, if you can get that across to everyone else, that's usually going to be the best way forward. But I will give you another tip um, just for critiquing my own mixes or when I'm working with a band um, to get everyone's input in a fair way. We listen and we don't touch anything, so I'm not touching any of the faders, I'm not looking at any plugins as I listen. I just write down what I'm hearing, um, anything that catches my ear as we go through it. And if it's something like the vocal needs to go up, I have to consider if it's just within a certain section or for the entire song. So I make sure that whoever is giving me notes puts times for start and end of whatever that note is. You know, from one minute to three minutes, turn up the snare drum by some amount. And uh, then it's still my choice of how much something goes up or down, but everyone's gonna be happy. And hopefully those things actually make a big difference. Next question comes from Michael. Is it possible to change some settings globally? For example, every time I start Reaper, I'd like to show the master track on the right side of the mixer. And in the mixer panel, use the small sidebar layout. Yeah, you can set this up in a default template. So just open up a project, add some tracks, get things set up the way that you like to start a project. Once you get that set up the way you like, save it as a project template and open up the preferences. There's an option there to save that as your default starting point. So every time you make a new project, go to File, New Project, or open up Reaper for the first time, it's going to start with those settings. The second thing you can do is part of the SWS extensions. There's a global startup action. And I use this to get all my windows set up the way that I like using the screen sets. My startup action is to load screen set number one. So every time I load a project or start a new project, it always looks the same. And if you need to run multiple actions at startup, just put them all together into a custom action and then use that as your startup action. The next question comes from Ray. On behalf of those who, like myself, are still confused about the relative merits and drawbacks of the various ways to create and use folders, groups, and buses, could you outline in general terms what each of these is best applied in the overall mixing process and which gotchas can be avoided by making sensible choices between them at key times in the recording and mix process. So folders, briefly, if anyone is new to Reaper, folders are a way that you can route audio, put on processing for multiple tracks at once, and to collapse and organize your tracks. So I usually use it for organization. I'll have all my guitar tracks, they'll go into one folder track, the folder track will have some processing like compression, maybe a bit of EQ that I want to apply to all of those. All those individual tracks can still have their own effects chains, um, but it's one fader to control the overall level of all those guitars. And one effects chain if I want to apply something to everything. You know, some people like to have um, maybe multiple kick drums going through a kick bus, and then the kick bus goes into the drum bus along with the other drum tracks. Um, and then that might go into a mix bus uh, folder track. 
um, or like an instrument folder track that's separate from other instruments. You know, you can have folders inside of folders inside of folders. And really the only problem that you'll run into if you're doing folders inside of folders inside of folders is a possible gain change. So if you're using a pan law that's not zero dB, every time you route from one track to another, you're going to have some sort of gain change. For example, you'll lose 3 dB when you go from uh, the first track into a folder and then another 3 dB when you go into another folder. That probably doesn't make a lot of sense if you're not using pan laws. Um, I don't personally use any pan laws other than 0 dB. Uh, so I don't run into that issue. That's the main reason, that's one of the main reasons why I don't. But just to summarize, make sure that folder track has a 0 dB pan law. Child tracks inside those folders uh, can have any pan law you want. There are also several ways that you can make a folder and that maybe that's interesting for you guys. The first way is just to click on the little folder icon on the track panel and then one of the tracks are below it will automatically become child tracks for that folder. Another way that I like to do it is to make a selection and then I run this action. And I'll take the selected tracks and make the top track a folder. If you wanted to make a track selection and then press a button so that they get put into a folder automatically, there's kind of a complicated custom action for that, uh, but it's not really too hard. It's just a matter of keeping track of which track is selected. Next question comes from Tom. What upcoming features would you like to see incorporated into an update of Reaper? You know, I don't really have any big feature requests for Reaper. I'm really happy with how it is right now. There's lots of little things though. I'd love to have a second video window so I can have one small docked video window um, and a second one that you can use for ADR and Foley work. If you have a voiceover booth, you might wanna have the control room have the video window and then the um, and then a full screen secondary video window for the client or the, the talent. And uh, that's not possible right now. There are some workarounds, of course, but uh, nothing as simple as just having two video windows synced with Reaper and yeah. Something that I mentioned in the metadata video, being able to take the custom tags and uh, in the database and being able to write that to uh, WAV files as metadata or some other way to like go into the properties of an item and then apply some metadata to the actual file. You know, kind of boring thing, but whatever. I really hope that high DPI and uh, just generally better support for 4K monitors and um, high DPI displays comes in Reaper 6. Reaper looks pretty bad on my new uh, MacBook Pro, so I'm kind of annoyed by that. So yeah, I think that really needs to be fixed for Reaper 6. It would be great if we could trigger uh, MIDI actions from web remotes. A lot of our Reaper WRB customers have been wanting that. And I think this is something that's probably not available anywhere. Um, I know it's not a unique idea, but I'd love to have high pass and low pass item fades. Just think about being able to fade out the volume Plus also make it like darker or brighter as it fades out. I think that'd be really awesome and probably not that CPU intensive to use. And then there's kind of the obvious things like having a step sequencer, improving the arpeggiator, having more nice looking uh, plugins, things like that. That would all be great. The last question comes from Chris. Please help with suggestions for eliminating, reducing, or dealing with latency. All right, so latency is the time it takes for the computer to process an incoming audio signal and then put it out to the output. An audio interface is always going to have a bit of latency. Um, there is often a switch on the device or maybe a software setting so that you can listen to the preamps directly into the outputs. Zero latency monitoring or direct monitoring, that's great, but you can't record through plugins with that unless the box itself has some sort of DSP where it runs plugins inside of the audio interface with its own dedicated processor. Without that, you're always limited by the block size of the audio device. Audio is processed in blocks. It's not processed one sample at a time in a continuous stream. It's processed in chunks, also called a block or a buffer. You can change that block size to be a very small amount of time, and that reduces the latency. But that increases the CPU load, and you get glitches, crackles, and possibly that will affect the actual recording, and you don't want that. You don't want to have glitches in the actual recorded files. So you need to find a good balance for low latency monitoring and also stability. 
Inside the Reaper session, you can also get latency from plugins. So every plugin needs a certain amount of time to actually process that audio. A lot of plugins are zero latency, but some of them could be like 64, 1024, things like that. If the amount of time that that plugin needs to process the audio is not less than your audio buffer size, it's going to take two buffers to get that out. So you don't want that either. Watch out for plugins on the master effects chain. All of your audio has to go through there. That's going to delay everything and you're going to have terrible latency. If you can record without plugins, that's the best situation. If you need to record with plugins, and a lot of us do, like virtual instruments and things like that, you wanna have uh, as few plugins in the chain as possible. So disable anything on the master track, especially things like linear phase EQs or mastering limiters. Those are always give you latency. And just try to find a good balance of low latency performance and stability. For my system, I run a Firewire interface on a fairly beefy i7 iMac, and, uh, and I can always run that at 64 samples uh, pretty much all day. And having a good audio interface with a fast connection, USB 3, um, Firewire, Thunderbolt, they can often provide better latency than uh, USB 2. And that's it for this Q&A session. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you like what I'm doing, support The Reaper Blog through Patreon, patreon.com slash The Reaper Blog. Here's a list of my super fan patrons. All your recent support has been so amazing. Thank you, everyone. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook. We have a group, Reaper Blog Community. You can find that at facebook.com slash groups slash Reaper Blog Community. And for more Reaper news, tutorials, articles, interviews, all those sorts of things, go to reaperblog.net. Thank you. See ya.